Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Jane Schodel. I'm one of the festival programmers, and it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to tonight's world premiere screening of Hotel Mumbai. <laughs> Written by John Cauley and Anthony Maris, and directed by Anthony Maris. To begin, we would like to acknowledge that tonight's event is taking place on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of New Credit and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat. We are grateful to have the opportunity to work in the community. We are pleased to present this film at the Visa Screening Room at the Princess of Wales Theatre, and we thank Visa Canada for making this possible. This film is eligible for the Grosch People's Choice Award. Vote for your favorite films at tiff.net slash vote. We would like to thank Arclike Films and Verve for providing us with this film. Thank you very much. Thanks also to Screen Australia for their ongoing support and Amanda Duthie of the Adelaide Film Festival for her support around my first viewing of the film. On November 26, 2008, in the heart of Mumbai's tourist district, attackers lay siege to the iconic Taj Palace Hotel. Hotel Mumbai is based on the astonishing true story of the guests and staff and their days-long fight for survival. Director Anthony Maris is an award-winning Australian producer, writer, and director. His most notable short film, The Palace, won numerous awards at festivals around the globe, as did his previous short, Azadi. The co-writer of Hotel Mumbai, John Cauley, has written or co-written numerous high-profile films and Oscar-nominated films, and also adapted the novel The Patriarch by Witi Iamera, directed by Lee Tamahori, which we screened at TIFF in 2016. The cast is a stellar one and includes award-winning Army Hammer, best known for his starring roles in The Social Network and Luca Guadagnino's Call Me By Your Name, we welcome back to Toronto, Dev Patel. <laughs> Star of the Oscar-winning Slumdog Millionaire and Oscar-nominated Lion, which had its world premiere here in this very theater at TIFF in 2016. Other key cast include Nazanin Boniadi from Counterpart and Homeland, Tilda Harvey from 52 Tuesdays, and Anupam Kerr from The Silver Linings Playbook. We are very pleased to have the opportunity to have a Q&A with our guests after the screening, but please join me in welcoming to Toronto, Anthony Maris. Well, it's a lot of people here. Um, I'd like to thank, obviously, everyone for coming, and I'm going to get right to the point and start getting our fabulous and amazing cast um, up onto this stage, because without them, obviously, we wouldn't be here tonight. Uh, they were an absolute uh, phenomenal team to work with. Uh, they've poured blood, sweat, and tears into this film, and um, let's celebrate them, starting with Miss Natasha Di Bordizzo. <laughs> Amandeep Singh. Suhail Nayar, Manoj Mera, Dinesh Kumar, who got in about 25 minutes ago to the venue, the lovely Tilda Cobham Hervey, also the one and only Jason Isaacs. My friend Anupam Kerr. Miss Nazanin Boniadi. And the one and only, my close dear friend, Dev Patil. Hey! Army Hammer is on his way. He's racing here. He'll be here for the Q&A afterwards. So, without further ado, another round of applause for our cast. Thank you. They say it takes a village to make a film. Uh, Mumbai is the size of uh, 
what, there's 20 million people in Mumbai and it felt like that many people we've got to thank right now because each and every one of them uh, were responsible in a really big way for making this all possible. Um, to Bazwa Wanak, our producer, thank you so much for pushing this through from the outset. <laughs> Gary Hamilton and the whole team at Arclight Films who are here from the very day one of this project. To Julie Ryan, who I've worked with so many times before, who's been a tireless supporter, who I love endlessly. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> to Jamon Thomas and Mark Montgomery from Zeitgeist Films. To Brian Hayes, our co-producer and uh, India aficionado. Barbara Gibbs, who's not in the audience tonight, but who's a totally unstoppable uh, line producer who was, who was just incredible in every way. To Pravesh and Pranav uh, Sani from iTop Pictures. Their motto is, we get it done, and by God, they do. Um, you know, Mumbai is an insane place. When I first got there, I could barely cross the street. It was so busy, and somehow they made sense of it and uh, made it possible for us to film there. So thank you, Pranav. He's here tonight. To Andrew Ogilvie, also, who couldn't be here with us tonight, and to Mike Gabrowi, also from Arclight Films, thank you so much. Uh, to John Colley, who was, with this, who was with us from the outset, who helped write this script. Again, we, uh, we walked the halls of the Taj Hotel together. We interviewed you know, as many survivors and, um, and guests, both guests and staff as we could. To John Colley, a huge round of applause. <laughs> to Nick Matthews, our cinematographer, I've never done a film without him. Every short film I've ever done has been with Nick. And he's just incredible in every way. Again, he's in the audience. We love you, Nick. Peter McNulty was our co-editor on the film. He can't be here tonight, but he helped shape the film into what you will see here tonight. Volker Bertelmann, Hauschka, who's responsible for our music. Also, he did the music for Lion, Oscar nominated, and just an absolute pleasure to work with. To Cleland Jones, who has been a tireless editor on this project also, who's also in the, in the audience tonight. Sam Petty, who's our sound designer, who is just a genius, I, I think anyway, as you see. Uh, Stephen Jones Evans, our production designer. Again, he couldn't be here, but I know he's here in spirit. And to Marty Pepper and the whole team at Kojo Pictures, who are responsible for just making our film, I think, look very beautiful. Thank you, Marty. Um, again, to Zeitgeist Entertainment Group and to Natalia Pavic Pavanchinskaya, sorry Natalia, we couldn't have made the film without your help and also for you Anand, we wouldn't be here without you today. Also Manraj Sekhan, they were tireless supporters of our film from day one and have been there, you know, from the outset. Um, I've got another page, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> to Screen Australia, the South Australian Film Corporation and Amanda Duthie from Adelaide Film Festival. Uh, again, these three groups have supported pretty much every short film I've ever done. I wouldn't be here without them today, so a huge thank you. To Bleecker Street and Shivani, for, to Shivans who, um, and Shivani Rowett, um, who've come on and who've saved our film. It was, uh, as you may or may not know, it, was, um, it went through some turbulent times, and um, we're very proud and honoured to have the film with them, and um, we know that Andrew Carpenter and, and Kent Sanderson will make it a success, and also to Manoj Bhargava. To the tireless team, Cara, Christine, and all the team at Shelter PR, um, they have just been phenomenal. Round of applause. <laughs> also, to Maxine Levin, also to Maxine Leonard, Bibi Lerner and Meg Landau, Bibi from IDPR, she has been a rock um, and has helped me through, through so much. And to my family who are also here tonight, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And we're done. Thanks, everyone. We have the pleasure of having about 15 minutes to have some conversation with our guests. Uh, if you have a question, please put your hand up high and wave it a bit to the side so that I can see you. I'll do my best to get to all of them. Um, I will field them, as I mentioned. Um, and if you could keep your question brief, and germane to the film, that would be terrific. And speak as loudly as you can. I will repeat the question for the benefit of all of the other people. So um, please join me in congratulating and welcoming Anthony Morass.
Thank you, everyone. Um, don't really know what to say, so I'm just going to get straight to it. Um, I want to congratulate our cast. Let's start with Natasha de Bordizzo. Can you stand up, Natasha? All the way from Mumbai, India, we have our four gunmen. Amandeep Singh, Suhail Naya, Manoj Mehra, and Dinesh Kumar. Thank you, gentlemen. Before we get to our lead cast, a few more people I want to thank. I want to thank my manager, Alex Lerner. Alex, could you stand up? Some place. <laughs> Amy Beecroft from Verve. And last but not least, Adam Levine, who has been an absolute warrior. We wouldn't have got through it without him. I don't know where he is. Is he standing? Stand up, Adam. Come on. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce our cast to the Q&A. Tula Cobham Hervey. <laughs> Jason Isaacs. All right, we'll hurry up. Anna Palm Kerr. <laughs> Mezzanine Boniati. And let's get the last two fellas out at once. Dev Patel and Army Hammer. We also have a special someone in the audience tonight. This film obviously wouldn't have been possible without him, and you'll see why in a minute. He's the reason I made this film, and he's here tonight. I don't know exactly where he is. We have the real Chef Hermant Oberoi. Could you please stand up, sir? He's a hero. Standing ovation, please. Bravo, Herman. He just got a plane in today. He landed this morning. Thank you, sir. Questions? Yes, over there, you're waving. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, the question is for Dev Patel. How did you feel about recreating these events in India? Sorry, I'm, I'm a little emotional. Uh, yeah. It's the first time we've, a lot of us have seen this as well. Um, I just turned to all my team backstage and I was like, this is why we do what we do, you know? Um, it's just above any sing, single soul in this film. It's a, uh, uh, what was the question? The first, um, India? <laughs> um, it's about India. It's about yeah. India. How, were, how was it for you to be filming there and recreating these events? Um, Difficult, it, 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 you know, I mean, we're acting, but uh, it, it kind of, you know, I, I, the last, the film that brought me here, it, you know, 10, 10 years ago was Slumdog, and at the end of that film, there's this massive dance at VT Station, you know, it's a celebration of humanity and love, and it kind of encapsulates this entire movie, and, uh, 
you know, I came back from filming that. I came back to my house in London. I opened the doors and my parents are standing in front of the television crying. And what's on the screen is what we just saw. You know, it's the, these attacks playing out. Uh, and, and, you know, to kind of, uh, to see that happen to this, you know, this place that was just bursting with life and people and children everywhere you look, it was very difficult. So when I heard there was a, a film being made, I was, you know, very proactive in wanting to meet the guys and, and you know, be a part of it. Uh, I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud of it because it didn't put any punches. I'm proud of it because it's an anthem of resilience. I'm proud of it because uh, of all of these guys and the guests and the staff. And I, I really think it's a, it's, a, it's a very important film for, for India. I can't really artic articulate it too well right now, but uh, sorry. It's a, very proud well of it. Uh, yes, here, please. Uh, the question is for the entire cast, is how do you decompress after a day of shooting hostage scenes and scenes of great emotional intensity? How did each of you deal with that? We bonded uh, after the shoot every day. I think uh, we were very lucky to shoot the film in Adelaide and it was uh, every time we did, and Anthony put the actual sound effects of blast and gunshots in the shoots. What we used to every time he did that, and he did it as a surprise. So every time we used to go out uh, for dinner, and uh, it humbled us. And I must say that I'm thank you, Dr. Mr. Oberoi. Uh, it's very humbling to have you in the audience, and I feel wearing this tuxedo. Uh, it's not important. I think what you have done is much more important. <laughs> So I think that's what we did. I had to acknowledge and uh, I saw the film for the first time just now and it's really shattered everything and it's moved and it's, um, thank you Anthony, thank you for making this film. Thank you. This is a very important film in today's time. I think this is a tribute to everybody who has lost a dear one in terrorist attack anywhere in the world and it's, it's, it comes across as a tribute to that uh, kind of person. Sorry. Um, Anthony, there's mention there of you didn't just shoot in Mumbai. Where else did you shoot the film? Uh, we shot the film in Adelaide, Australia, which is my hometown, um, as well as Mumbai. So a lot of the, um, the interiors of the hotel that were damaged, basically, the smaller um, corridors and uh, hotel rooms, which do make up a large part of the movie, were shot at the South Australian Film Corporation in Adelaide, Australia. Originally, we were going to shoot in a studio, and uh, our production designer noticed that the actual building the offices were in uh, it was similar architecture to the actual Taj. And the um, South Australian Film Corp were very gracious about moving out of their offices so that we could turn it into the Taj, which we did. And um, it, was a, it was a real challenge to, um, to try and create one of the world's greatest luxury you know, hotels um, in Adelaide, as well as, as well as in Mumbai, and have it all feel like it's a one sort of flowing sort of a location, but I think he did a great job in doing that. Absolutely did a great job doing that, yes. Uh, on the aisle there, please. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Some Um, the question is for Anthony. She's curious about the decision not to include David Headley in the storyline. For those of you who don't know, which maybe many of you, David Headley helped um, case the joints, the, the joints, the, the, the different locations that were um, that were the attack sites, and he fed that information back to the groups um, that organised the attacks. And it's very simple why we didn't include him because the film is shown through the perspective of the guests who um, who worked through the um, who worked through the who lived through the attacks, and we tried to put the to put the audience in um, in the same position as these guests and staff would have been. They had imperfect knowledge; they didn't know what was going on, and we didn't want to. I didn't want to make it 
an objective look at what happened. We tried to make it as subjective as possible, meaning through the eyes of the people that experienced it. There are times when we jump out of that, but for the most part, you're never getting the story through the eyes of, of, um, of this, these cast members who didn't know. And you'll notice there are parts, basically when we cut to the televisions, as a way to provide the minimal bit of information needed, I think, to be able to understand the story. But no one knew what was going on. You know, when, when the attacks first happened, no one could even have dreamt that the Taj would be under attack like this. They thought it was firecrackers from weddings. Then when they realised it was guns, they thought, well, it must be gangsters shooting outside. Even once the, the, all of Mumbai was under attack and, you know, there were people in the building, those who weren't in the immediate proximity of, of the gunmen just couldn't fathom the idea that this icon of, of, um, of India, the Taj, would, would you know, be an under attack like this. And that's kind of one of the reasons that we made the film, in that you have all these different people from all these different walks of life you know, who are coming together to you know, try and get through this event. And we're living in a time now where people are trying to divide us. South of this border, there are people now who are trying to divide us. Um, you know, all through the world, it's, um, you know, this is what's going on. And the staff and the guests at the Taj Hotel, I think, provide a really beautiful example of overlooking our differences and joining together to try and overcome adversity. And I think that's a story that's worth being told. Bravo. We have time for one more question. Yes, please. But when this happened on 26-11, I was shooting about 10 kilometers away from it. We thought uh, it spread as a rumor that it's a, it was an underworld attack somewhere, and then it dawned on us that it's a terrorist attack. But you know, the unfortunate part is when you're not part of what is happening. That's why I can't stop uh, uh, crying, because uh, the general manager of the hotel was a very dear friend of mine who lost his wife and two children. Uh, they were staying in the hotel. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to uh, feel what is actually happening. That's, this is what happened actually. I don't know how to, what to say to you. I, I'm sorry. Uh, I, sometimes it's silence is better than words. And if I can make it connect with you as an audience, as an actor, I think that's a tribute to, uh, to all those people who've lost their lives. I think we can agree that you've made an enormous connection with everyone here tonight. It's been a great honor to present I have, this film. I do have one thing to say about oh, the film, right, which is right. we're desperate for it to be seen by people, not just because we're in the film business in a, a narcissistic way, but it's a really important message in the world, and that will happen if you vote in the, in the <laughs> People's Choice Award, whatever it's called. So make That's sure you Jason. vote for the film. <laughs> Thank you so much for being Thank here you. tonight. Thank you very it's been much. A great Thank honor. You. Thank you all very much. Thank you.